Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is another edition of Analytics Live. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about analytics APIs and specifically around quotas, so some best practices and how to plan for growth. My name is Pete Frizella. I'm a developer advocate on the analytics team. I'm Jitendra Soneja. Uh, I'm, in, I'm based off of Irvine, and I'm the tech lead on the analytics API. So we're glad to have you up here today. Uh, so Jitendra is the tech lead for the API. He's the guy who actually builds this thing uh, and makes this great API that everybody's that a lot of people use and uh, have really uh, excited to have you here today to talk about some, some issues here. about quotas and like that. So this is great. Great. Uh, so we're going to start off with, uh, from a gender perspective, uh, talk a little bit why we have quotas, like what's the point of quotas, a little couple things about best practices, and then how you can uh, plan for growth, and also uh, some of the common errors that people experience and issues they might have. So we'll start off with quotas. Why do we have quotas? Like, what's the point of quotas? And uh, what are the quotas that we actually have? And which ones are kind of the ones that you might uh, come up against uh, during your kind of daily usage of the API? Right. So let's talk about why do we have quotas. So uh, a lot of like a lot of other APIs within Google and outside of Google, we have uh, we have like some standard quotas and some API specific quotas. So the main purpose for the quotas is to manage resources. At Google, we have limited servers, limited resources, and we need to make sure that. Everybody, all the developers out there are getting equitable access. They're sharing the resources in a fair manner. Sure. So that's one main purpose. And the other is protecting our systems from abuse. It may be intentional or in unintentional. There could be some buggy program that may just you know, go into an infinite loop and just kind of overload our servers. And you know, that could affect other developers who are actually doing the right thing. So we need to have this protection in, in place to make sure that we are serving all our users well. And, and you know, it's it's at the end of the day, it's it's you know, for for both like for developers as well as us that you know we have these quotas in place. Sure. Yeah. So let's talk about the different types of quotas that we have. So one one category is like general quotas that apply to all the API requests. So we call them we call them as general quotas in the documentation. But these are quotas that apply like these are umbrella quotas. I, will, I would call them. Yeah. These apply to all kinds of requests, may it be management, reporting, or upload. Uh, and then there are some API-specific or feature-specific quotas that apply to certain features. And we'll talk about those uh, in a minute. So quotas can also be categorized by the refresh period. So what I mean by refresh period is how often you get the, the tokens refilled. So tokens are basically a unit which allows you to make quota one or more quota requests. Okay. So short term meaning the, the token gets refreshed. The, the set of tokens get refreshed in a short term, meaning like one second. Uh, or yeah, I, I think that's the only short term quota that we have. So an example is QPS or yep. the concurrent quota. Uh, and then we have some long term quotas, which are, as the term says, they are longer term, like meaning daily quotas. They get refreshed on a 24-hour basis. Sure. And there isn't any quotas that are longer than a day, right? Every day they get refreshed. Right. Those day. are the standard long term. I mean, yeah, some APIs might have like hourly quotas or, or things like that, but we only have, we only have 24 hours. OK. Uh -huh. Keeping it simple. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the other uh, aspect to look into when we define different types of quotas is what is the type of the request. So if you think about it, uh, we have different features and hence different types of requests. So for example, a get request or a read-only request is very different from an upload request, which can actually incur some writes to additional CPU or CPU processing. So we need to consider that when we you know come up with these different quota policies. And remember, the underlying theme is we are trying to you know, the, all the quota numbers that we have, these aren't arbitrary numbers. We just, like, we look at all the use cases, uh, make sure we are, we are not restricting any use case, sure. enabling all the things that developers want to do, all the great apps that they want to build, uh, and at the same time, product our systems, so. Yeah. And finally, uh, all of these quotas are associated with some kind of entity. Uh, a lot of pro uh, quotas are per project quotas, so these could be, like, uh, a QPS per project or uh, number of, like the, the one that we have the most common is uh, daily, daily request per project, which is 50,000. Yeah. And then there are some entity specific, like per profile or per pro property quotas. OK, great. So let's take a look um, about uh, around the quotas that we actually have that most people kind of come up against. So we have other quotas, and we'll provide resources later on where you can go and we have a documentation that explains all the different quotas that we might have. Uh, so we just want to cover some of the, the main ones, the big ones that, that uh, people are often um, requesting or, or asking for more information about. The first one is uh, going back to uh, Jitendra when he was talking about um, around the general quotas that we have that apply to all APIs. 
Um, the biggest one is that we have is the 50,000 requests per day. So this is the courtesy limit that we give you uh, in terms of quota. Uh, and this is tied back to this API's console project. So from a developer perspective, if you have an application um, that services maybe many users, you will be limited to this 50,000 requests per day uh, until you ask for more. And this is refresh daily. The other one is IP address based, and this is 10 requests per second. So for each IP that's making a request to our service, uh, you're limited to these 10 requests. And that's refreshed. Uh, that's a short term one, and it's refreshed it's per second. Uh, per second. Right. So in terms of what can be increased, uh, the, the daily limit on the, uh, for the API's console project, the 50,000 requests per day, that can be increased. So you can make a request for that. Um, and the 10 requests per second uh, is a limit that um, is quite high, actually, in terms of like if you actually think about how many requests that's you can true. make per, per day. Uh, cannot be increased. Right. And yeah. that's like one of those underlying limits that just you know is there as a safeguard to protect our systems, sure. and which is one of the reasons that we don't you know we simply cannot increase that limit. So when we look at the uh, API specific quotas for the core report API, um, some of you might be familiar with this one. This is a 10,000 requests uh, per day. And this is on a per profile or user basis. So um, if you think about it if, if as a developer who might have um, maybe, let's say, 100 users, for example, each one of your users will have, for their own profile, 10,000 requests per day that you can make right. against that profile. Um, and this is uh, refreshed on a daily basis. Right. right. Yeah, that, that's a good distinction. So we have quotas that are some are based on user entities or user level quotas. So this one is a, an example of user level quotas, uh, since a profile belongs to a user. Yes. And then the per project ones are developer or app specific quotas. Exactly. Yeah. And then finally, we have the 10 concurrent requests per second on a per profile basis. And this is tied to the IP address, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so this also. is actually per, per profile. Per so, profile yeah. so if you have, let's say, long running requests, uh, you need to wait for those requests for that profile for single profile to finish. Again, this is to you know, if you are sending us ten long running requests, it's, it's probably better to wait for the response from sure. uh, some of them before you send additional requests. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of what can be increased, uh, neither one of these actually can be increased, right? But this right. goes back to I mean, Jitendra talked about uh, how we look at we look at uh, usage history, we look at how people are using the API. Uh, and I think these quotas cover like ninety nine percent of use cases, right? So right, um, right. You know, for most users, this is actually yeah, if you look at the numbers, like 10,000 requests per profile, that, that seems pretty generous. I mean, if you think about the use cases, like like 10,000 seems a lot of requests per profile for a single sure. day, you, even though you might have a lot of data. Those, yeah. That's a lot of requests. For sure. OK, so let's talk a little bit about best practices, how you get the most out of the quota um, that, you, that you're given in from a courtesy perspective. Uh, so what's really important is the API's console. Um, so this is kind of your starting point for a lot of the things that have to do with quota and managing your usage around analytics APIs. Um, to make sure you're really getting all of the full quota that you're that you're given from a um, from a start starting point from a default standpoint, uh, you want to make sure that you've got an API's console project. So some people actually don't realize that they have to have and be registered to to make requests to our API. Right. Um, so once you do that uh, and you tie all of your requests are uh, back to your project and you've associated your request to your project, then that'll make ensure that you're getting the full quota, the full fifty thousand requests per day, uh, and other, any other requests that we have, right? Right. And this could all be managed through the API's console. You can come in, uh, create a new project under the API access uh, uh, pane. You can set up a client, and that'll that'll give you right, all set information. Set up auth. Yeah, set up all other things. Yeah. The other thing is this is where you can come in and manage your quota. And there's a couple things you can do here. One is uh, there's you can request more quota. Um, there's mm -hmm. a link here that will get you started. And you can also see your usage during, throughout the day in terms of how much you've used of that courtesy limit of the fifty thousand requests. And then there's a really important thing here is this is where you can come in and set your per user limits. Um, so although you're given uh, 10, you can make 10 requests per second, uh, you may want to limit that if you have just say a whole bunch of users uh, and you want to kind of limit them in terms of how many requests they can make on a per client basis. Right. Uh, then you can come in here and set that per user limit to uh, whatever value you'd like. However, <laughs> you have to make sure uh, when you think you can put any value basically in this field, right? I think uh, it's, yeah, it's for all APIs at, at, uh, at Google. So. Um, I've seen people put like a million for the set per user limits, but it's really not going to do anything because at the right. end of the day, what gets enforced is the 10 queries right. per it second. It gets capped at 10, 10 yeah. QPS. So I mean, you can set it from anywhere from, I think you can even do less than one in, these, in this case, I think. Uh, but yeah, d there's no point in setting it higher than 10 uh, queries per second. And if you're an individual developer that's working on your only single profile, then you might as well just set it to 10 if you want, because you're not really trying to rate limit anybody, right? Right, yeah. yeah. That could be your default value. Yeah. And the reason you might want to do that to rate limit is that you don't want a single user out of all your users 
eating up most of your quota because they may be making more requests. Than right, right. This is a useful utility that you should make use of depending on the nature of your app. Sure. Yeah. And then finally, there's this reports pane that I'm not sure if everybody is aware of this, but it's really great because you can come in to the API's console. And there's a couple things you can do with this. One is just see how much you're using in terms of requests on a daily basis. But it also gives you some information around where people are coming from that are making requests, like where they're located. And then there's stuff like you can do for diagnostics. There's error rates in here. And you can see of all the requests you're making, what's the error rate that you might have? Because uh, you want to keep that low and make sure you're, you're, you don't want to be spending quota on errors, right? right. So this is a great way to check out um, how things right. are, are working. Also, if you see zero in here, that means you haven't properly associated your, associated your requests with your um, API's console right. project. So yeah. you should see some usage in here if things yeah, are it's, it's, it's a very handy utility. I think you should totally make use of it. It gives you a lot of insights into you know, are you doing the right things, what your growth pattern looks like, and yeah. so on. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's talk about handling different kinds of errors. So uh, like we talked about, uh, there are some sh um, short-term uh, quotas and long-term quotas. Yeah. So for the short-term ones, like QPS-based limits, um, you should uh, probably uh, handle those by implementing some kind of rate limiting. So what we mean by rate limiting is, so if you think about it, 10 requests per second, again, seems uh, uh, pretty, uh, quite a few requests per second. So if you are uh, trying to make requests too fast, you will see these errors, rate limiting errors. And sure. what you need to do is basically slow down a bit, implement some kind of technique. One of such, one of such techniques is exponential back off, uh, where you actually uh, basically slow down by using uh, some kind of delay. And the way you do it is uh, you, you start with some default value, and then you keep basically start increasing that uh, exponentially until uh, you stop seeing those errors. So it's, it's one of the techniques. Again, you could have uh, whatever technique you may want to use sure. that suits your app. But the, the idea is to slow down if you should see any short-term errors. Uh, the another, ex another example of short-term errors is concurrent quota, um, where you may be making a lot of requests per profile. So in that case, uh, again, you should just wait for some of those requests to finish before you send uh, next set of requests. Yeah, OK. And, and the error rate, and we're like, what's typical for an error rate that we want to see? Right. So so on the error rate, I think, like, like Pete just mentioned, in the APIs console, you see all the different statistics. One of those is error rates. So you should keep an eye on that on a, yeah. you know, on a regular basis to make sure that the error rate, at, like typically we recommend your error rate should be below 1% to 3%. If it's anywhere about that, you should probably look at your app, see what you're doing, what you could be doing different to bring, that, bring down uh, that error rate. Yeah. And lastly, I would mention is like handling errors is essential. Like code errors, you should be programming for those because that leads to a better user experience uh, rather than you know user seeing some weird error. You should you can actually be more transparent and let them know yep. uh, what's going on. Uh, so one of the other things that you could do uh, again with the help of the APIs console is plan for growth. Uh, this is one of the techniques that you can uh, use to deal with both short term as well as long term. Uh, quotas. Uh, so for example, you can keep an uh, eye on the number of users that you have, what your growth pattern is looking like. You can look at your 30-day window to see what's your max, what's your minimum number of, like daily number of requests that you have. Sure. Uh, and some of the, you could use some of the uh, optimizing techniques. So for example, are you making too many requests to s use the same data? So in a, in, in a couple of slides, Pete, we'll actually give an example of this, where you could actually optimize requests. Sure to request the same amount of data in a fewer request. So you could save on the number of requests. Yeah. I mean, caching is a, a huge one that uh, I think a lot of people don't take advantage of caching uh, on their end. Um, right. So I look at user requests for quota increases. I see that people make uh, the same request over and over. And I know they're trying to refresh data, which is what right. uh, which is big. Yeah, caching can definitely save you a lot right. of quota. Right. Yeah. That's that's a very good one, too. So caching, especially for like data that doesn't change that often, like, like management think, API yeah, stuff. Exactly, yeah. management API, configuration data. I mean, how, how often do people update their accounts or profiles? Maybe once in a while. Yeah. So you can cache it for a few hours, for, for a day or so. I mean, again, depending on the nature of your app. Sure. But yeah, you should definitely use some form of caching to, again, get the max out of your existing quotas. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so how do you actually make a quota increase? Now, we understand, obviously, that we, we, we provide courtesy limits that uh, are, work really well for most uh, developers. Uh, but of course, at some point, uh, you might grow your user base and you want uh, some more quota. So how do, you, how do you actually go about doing that? Uh, so again, start back at the API's console. Uh, if you go to the quotas pane, you'll see that there's a link that um, says request more. And that'll kind of kick off the whole process uh, where you fill in some information of what you're looking for in terms of quota, right. uh, how does your app work. Um, but some of the things you probably want to look at um, and start off with um, thinking about um, to make before you make a quota request 
is you want to make sure you review the quoted documentation that we have. Um, so when you click that link, you'll get some other links that will send you some docs that you can mm -hmm. review what the quota limits are, uh, understand things about like setting per user limits. Um, so these are important things that um, before you make the request, you might actually you might be able to resolve the request uh, right. before actually making the request. So it's good to check that documentation. The other thing is make sure you've optimized your requests. Um, and this just, just goes back to can you make uh, requests that are maybe consolidated a couple requests? Um, can you save on quota before you're actually requesting more, right? Right. This will help you for long-term planning. Uh, we want to see like a low error rate. Uh, you know, if we said 1% to 3%. I th that, that seems like a pretty reasonable uh, error rate if you're doing proper error handling. Um, and the reason we, we want to see a low error rate is that we don't really want to scale up your error rate as you go along. So if right. it's 20% and we give you, you know, from yeah. 50 to a million requests per day or 100,000 yeah. requests per day, yeah. you're just scaling those errors up with that request. So uh, we want to see that, that error rate in right. a spot. Right. Make yeah. sure you're making the max out of what you have before you ask for more quota. Exactly. And, yeah. and also remember, a lot of these errors are counting towards your daily quota. So it's, it's better for the app to actually not do too many errors, because at the end of the day, they would get counted against your daily quota. Exactly, yeah. And I've seen requests come in uh, where 50% of the quota is being used for, it's just errors, error rate. Like they're not handling proper rate limiting or whatever. Yeah. So right. that's a pretty important one. Um, and use the APIs console to check those, those values, right? And then when you do make the request, uh, it's just helpful if you explain the growth uh, estimates and kind of where you're coming from. If it's a new app, we understand you might not ha have any usage yet, but you're planning for uh, maybe a launch or something like that. That's fine. Uh, just send us a note through the form. Let us know, you know, what users, how many users you're planning, how many requests you're making per users on average, and just give us some kind of general guideline on what you think uh, usage might look like. Um, and then we can always ramp that up. So I, I typically will suggest, you know, give us a reasonable amount of quota. Let's launch and see where we're at. And then we can grow from there. Uh, that's not a problem. Right, right. Right. The more information you give us, the more transparent you are, the easier it is for us to review the whole exactly. thing and yeah. get back to you as soon as possible. Exactly. And then if you have an existing app, uh, we would like to see that you are actually currently using a good chunk of your quota. Um, and this goes back to planning right, your growth. You don't want to come exactly. in last minute and make the request. You want to look and say, OK, we're at 80% of usage of our quota. We should probably make a quota request today. Um, and I mean, 80% is just kind of a loose number, but that, I think that's pretty reasonable. You should be using at least 80% before you make the request. That sounds really yeah. yeah. All right, so let's take a look at errors and kind of common problems that people might have that we see quite often when they make requests and maybe not handling right. 403s properly, uh, and also what the error messages uh, are actually that they would see probably, right, when they make requests. Exactly. So yeah, li li like I said before, if you get errors, you, you should probably you know pro program for those and handle them gracefully. So let's talk about the different kinds of errors that you get uh, as code errors. So sure. 403 is the response code that you get for all HTTP response code for all the different types of code errors. And then you see a reason or a code that is uh, that will tell, tell you what kind of uh, code error uh, you are getting. Okay. So one of the examples is daily limit exceeded. As the name suggests, you are exceeding some kind of daily limit. Yeah. So ideally, if you did your planning right, like what Pete was mentioning, uh, if you looked at your numbers uh, and you are you know, not close to uh, your daily limit, you should uh, pr probably never see this error. So if you, do, do, you, know, you are estimating your traffic, look, uh, you know, tracking your growth pattern, hopefully this should never happen. But if, the, if it does, does happen, it does yeah, happen. Exactly. I mean, exactly. You get surges there of users. Times. It does happen. But yeah, definitely planning beforehand. Right. Is, I mean, you might as well send Try us an email. That. Even if you're maybe a month out, you might want to send an email and say, look, I think we're gr and the weight we're growing right now, we're not 80%, but we're going to be in a month from now. Can, yeah. you, can I just ping you when you know, we hit this limit so I can kind of get something? Yeah, we can, we can at, least, at least know what's going on with the, with the app beforehand, yeah. Exactly. So if that, this does happen, our, our recommendation is you, you should probably just stop making Because retrying is not going to help. It's not going to do are, anything, yeah. You have finished your daily quota. You need to wait for the next 24-hour period to tick in to ref in order to get the new round of quotas. And um, th that happens at Pacific uh, midnight uh, yeah. midnight time. So you need to wait till that uh, before you get a new round of quota. The other kind of quota errors are uh, around rate limiting. Like if you're hitting uh, uh, the servers too hard, you, you would see, like if you're exceeding the 10 QPS limit, you would see user rate limited exceeded. Again, sure. like I mentioned before, just implement some kind of uh, throttling or just slow down, implement maybe, make use of some kind of exponential back off. Uh, and those should go away. Those, those, those are one of th those are kinds of errors that you can actually deal with in an automated fashion. Like just slow down, and it, it should go sure. away. Whereas daily, you just have to stop making the request. And what's the like the unreg 
I guess this unreg versus this other one that's over here. Right. So so th there uh, so that one is since it says unreg, it's about registration. So this means that either you haven't registered and sending us like unregistered traffic, so you need to go sign up in APS console. The other thing could be maybe you have registered, but for some reason your setup is in auth setup is incorrect and you are not propagating the project ID in yeah. your request. So you either need to set up OAuth two, which is our uh, we strongly recommend that you do that. Yeah. That way you don't have to worry about this. You would, you would never see this if you are using OAuth two. But for some reason, if you cannot use OAuth two, uh, you could yeah, uh, use uh, API key to pass your uh, uh, the key parameter to pass your API key. Sure. Okay. And lastly, there there are other co code errors like concurrent code exceeded. Uh, our code exceeded is a error code for that. Again, the idea there is to just slow down, wait for the first round of requests to finish, and then you should be good. So sure. Okay, great. So the the ten thousand requests per profile. Uh, this is a common uh, request we get for increases here. Uh, and so typically, we the like the quota me meets the needs of actually probably about one hundred percent of people on the ten thousand requests. I think. Um, but we do see common, like a common case for this in, in terms of why they're hitting this limit. Um, right. So I've got two examples here. We'll just go through quickly, um, explain like probably what's usually happening. So often when I see them, people hitting this limit, um, the f the what they're doing is, for example, they're making one request per day. So they want to see over time, um, on a daily basis, maybe something like visits, and they'll actually make a request for visits on for the June sixth. They'll make the request for June seventh, and basically every day they're making a single request. Right. So you're making n requests per the amount of days that you want data for. Right? So when you're doing a query like this, what you want to uh, look at is possibly can you add a, a dimension. In this case, you would, you'd want to add a date dimension. Right. Uh, and then requery for the entire period. And that would break out your results by date. Right? And then you could parse it out uh, on your end to, mm -hmm. to actually get the data you want. So I, this actually, actually happens quite a bit, that we see this type of um, request being made. The other one we see quite often is, uh, for example, you might want to have something like, what are my visits for every page on my site? And you want to you want to actually do it for each URL on your on your site. So the people uh, make a request for visits, use a filter, and use something like page path for example. And they'll set page right. path equal to the page path that they're interested in for visits, and they'll get one result back. So for every page you want uh, data for, you have to make a request. If you have right. ten thousand pages on your site, which That's some right. sites isn't a lot, some sites it is, right. um, you basically eat up all your quota getting that data. So you can only make exactly. one request for all your sites or all your pages in right. one day. Just one type yeah. of data. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you want to refresh that during the day, you can't, right? right? So the the solution for that really is that again, you should remove the filter and add a page path dimension. With the API, you can query up to ten thousand uh, results in one request, right? So you could get all those ten thousand results in one in a shot, single request. right? Yeah. So you went from ten thousand requests to like one request, and you get the same data, right? And then you parse it again. You parse it on your end to get the actual visits out right. of that, right? Right, and and for both these requests, and in general, what you have seen for when users say, okay, we are hitting this quota, what do we do now? Yeah. Uh, like Pete gave in both these examples, if you notice, there's generally a pattern with these kinds of requests that they are trying to make smaller, really small requests, yeah. uh, and they are trying to fetch data in small chunks and then stitch it on the client side. So what you could do, that, that's a general pattern that we see when people hit this limit. So what you like, like Pete said, what you, the way you can solve it is what make one comprehensive request or one overarching request that gets all that all data, data yeah. in, a, in a single request. And then, in fact, that will save you all the stitching that you are doing on the client side. Yeah. So, so uh, this is actually, I would say, 99% of the time when we get this 10,000 request quota increase that people are trying to get increases, um, yeah. this solves their problem, actually. Yeah. The other thing is rate limit errors. So a lot of people get rate limit errors, even though we obviously recommend that you implement some kind of um, either exponential back off or some other mechanism to, to back off on these errors that you're getting for, for rate limiting. Mm -hmm. um, but it, aside from that, if, if there's another use case that, for example, if you are a developer that has uh, thousands of users or you have a, you're actually servicing uh, or providing analytics through your application for a whole bunch of users, mm -hmm. um, well, if you go back to the 10 requests per second quota that we have, that's based on IP address, right? So if you think about it, if you're a developer that's doing this for a lot of users, all your requests are coming from a single IP. Right. So from our end, it looks like there's one user from, from an IP perspective. Uh, but you're actually doing this for a lot of users. So what you want to use in those cases to get, make sure that all of your users are getting that 10 queries per second is to s use either the user IP or quota user parameters with your requests. And what that ends up doing is 
uh, for each request you're making, you're, you're basically saying, I'm making this request, but it's for this user. Right. And then we'll give that full quota for that particular user. Right. right? That each user gets like 10 QPS. Get their, gets their 10 QPS, right. right? Or whatever you set in the, when you, whatever you set in the API's yeah. console. Exactly. The set yeah. per user limit will be affected by this. But, um, and a lot of people don't know this, this, this exists, and they're making requests for, um, right, for on a behalf lot of, of like a lot of users, yeah. and, and they're hitting that 10 QPS, even though they're, they're doing this for a lot of users, right? So right. this is really important, actually. Yeah. So uh, one of the other problems could be uh, like when you look at the API console, uh, you see zero requests there. So you may be wondering, OK, what's going on? I'm making all these requests, but I'm not seeing uh, being reflected in the console. Yeah. So th there could be one of the two issues. So either, uh, like, like generally, what hap like either you are not using OAuth 2. Like if you use OAuth 2, like I said, it shouldn't have, yeah, this, it problem, it right? shouldn't have yeah. this problem. As part of OAuth to token, the pro project ID gets propagated uh, as part of the request. Sure. But if you cannot use OAuth 2 uh, for whatever reason, uh, there's this API key that you can find for each project uh, in the console. You should use that key in the key param uh, in your each with your each request so that your all the all the quota gets assigned to that project sure. and you get the full quotas. Yeah, and this happens quite a bit actually. Yeah. yeah. All right, so um, I think we have a few questions, but uh, I just want before we get to that, um, we do have some resources. We'll we'll provide these links uh, as part of the uh, below the video. Uh, but they're also also available on our developer site at developers.google.com slash analytics. Um, so all this is available for you guys. Right. And we do have a few questions here. Um, yeah, we'll we have through. one question actually from one of our users. And he's talking about uh, upload operations. So okay. they've been running into 500 upload operations per project per day quota when performing uploads. And yeah. this typically happens for them when they're trying to backfill yeah, this data is for users. Yeah. And that's that's a common use case for the upload yeah. API, right? It's a new API, and you have your users that have been using these different platforms for the yeah. past couple of years, and you want to upload all that data. So, so Pete has actually. So um, fortunately, yes. You, this is yeah. one of the quotas you can get. You can request to have increased. Yeah. Um, so if you go through the API's console, uh, go to Request More, um, make the request, um, yeah, and just make sure that you've provided the project ID that you're using. And we can definitely take a look at uh, whether it makes sense to give you a quote increase. And uh, we just look at the same thing as make sure the error rate's low, uh, you're using a, a good percentage of it. Obviously, if you're hitting it, you're using a good percentage of your quota. So yeah, that one can be increased. Right. Actually, um, we do have more questions, yes. OK. Um, is there a way to increase the 10,000 per profile quota? So we covered this earlier in the presentation. That is one of the quotas that is not um, that's not able to be increased. Right. However, I would look at the usage and see if you can optimize um, based on what we just described here right. around the common scenarios. Yeah, try to consolidate requests and see see what like try to see what what kind of request pattern like what data are you trying to fetch? Can you use Make additional dimensions? Request, yeah. Exactly, additional dimensions in the same request, yeah. additional metrics. Try to yeah. combine multiple requests. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, you can, yeah. yeah. Sorry. You can get ten thousand rows per request. So I, I would definitely look and see: Are you getting? Are you just requesting one row of data? And if you are, then maybe there's a way to. Maybe there's that sign that there's something right. maybe that you could probably do a little bit better. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you, if you still have that problem, talk to us, and we can work with you to to you know sure. get, get it resolved. Okay. So we have another. Oh, that's the five hundred uploads. Um, so two K request. I don't think that one's related to analytics. So. Yep, okay. I, th I think that's that's all we that's have. That's all we have. Okay, so uh, again, I encourage you to go to the website. Uh, we have uh, all this; most of this is covered in documentation. We're going to embed this video as part of our documentation, so you guys can re review and reference this at any time. Um, and I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, okay. We plan to have a few more of these in the next couple of weeks, so please definitely check on our uh, blog and part of our G Plus profile um, to make sure you can uh, be up to date on what's coming out in terms of uh, Analytics Live. So thank you very much for joining us, yeah. and have a good day. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.